Hello, race fans. I'm Chris Terrell. I'm here for RotorPros.com to bring my weekly daily fantasy NASCAR post qualifying picks video. What I'm going to be doing is going over the practice information, qualifying information, and then giving you my core plays. And uh, I'll be doing all this with my daily fantasy NASCAR cheat sheet, which you can get in the RotorPros community chat. Not a member yet? Head over to RotorPros.com, click on the yellow sign up button, um, and with a $5 weekly membership, you're going to get a three day trial. With a $15 a month, membership you're going to get a seven day trial and same with the $150 yearly membership you're also going to get a seven day trial. Come in check us out we cover a ton of sports NASCAR, PGA, NHL, NFL, NBA, soccer, uh, MLB starting up here in about a month so uh, it's exciting times over here at Roller Pros come in check out what we're all about. With that said let's jump into this week's race. All right, this week we've got the Pennzoil 400 coming to you from Las Vegas Motor Speedway. It's a mile and a half intermediate track. Things are going to be a little bit different this year than we've seen in the past if you're breaking down track history. Um, they're, they're the 2019 season, we've seen the new rules package. We got a peak of it last week at Atlanta. One big change this week is not only is there the tapered spacer, um, the rear spoiler to create downforce this week at Las Vegas. We've also got aero ducts at the front of the cars, which is going to help uh, keep the cars closer together. And we did see a result um, when they tested here in February, as well as through the first practice, qualifying, and final practice this weekend as well. Um, just kind of looking at things. It's going to be an interesting week from a fantasy perspective just because of the draft. Qualifying was very draft heavy. A lot of drivers weren't really liking it. Um, what we did see and Kevin Harvick did predict is that we're not going to see the fastest car up there on the pole. And he did win the pole, but he definitely wasn't the fastest car when looking at practice speeds. Didn't catch the draft in the right place. The guys that were fast, we're just going to go here. Uh, we'll look at the qualifying order here first. So yeah, Kevin Harvick won the pole. Denny Hamlin came in second with teammate Kyle Busch right behind him in third. And then you got uh, teammates Austin Dillon and Daniel Hamrick. They've been fast together all weekend, been doing drafting together. They're both very cheap. So as long as, you know, if they're going to stay in the draft, definitely like getting uh, pairing them together, you know, for value. Just They're, they're going to be GPP, I think, just basically because they're starting top five. The, the kind of theme of building lineups this weekend especially on DraftKings, is going to be place differential. It's going to race, you know, there's going to be some qualities, I think, of like a Daytona, like a restrictor plate track on Talladega. Um, guys from the back are going to be able to move to the front quite easily, just kind of with some of that drafting that's going to go on and some of the strategies that we're going to see from some of the, the crew chiefs and teams there as well. So just going to, going to looking at final practice times here, looking at the fastest lap, there's Hemrick and Dylan right there at the top. You got Brad Kozlowski, Amarola, um, Kurt Busch, Eric Jones, Ryan Newman um, up there, speeds as well. Kyle Busch, Stenhouse, and then we've got Kyle Larson wrapping up the top 10 there. So, sorting here by DraftKings pricing, that's what most people are playing right now. Uh, I got my model figured out, so I'm looking, you know, 50% of my model is looking at practice two speeds and then some qualifying practice differential so the more weight I put on that column AS there is just more um, the model's going to be looking for drivers who are fast in practice but starting towards the back because of the the wacky qualifying kind of the same model I use at a Daytona as well I, I put some heavy weight on that normal tracks I'm usually only about five ten percent on that so that's the way I've got it looking then the other fifty percent we're looking at track history track type history and then how things have been going on the season as well so if you want to adjust that model um, to you know, adjust the numbers around a little bit to what works for you, or if you're just playing on FanDuel, or if you're just playing on DraftKings, you can create your own copy of this sheet by going up to File, make a copy, call it whatever you want, and click OK. And then you're going to have an editable version of that, and you just come up here and change these numbers, and then just make sure um, that it comes out to 100 here. And then as you change those numbers, your overall weighted ranking on the far right and far left in orange there is going to change. So a couple drivers that stand out that I've already got listed on my target section here, and I will have that fully filled out here by um, probably about 8 p.m. Eastern tonight. So a couple guys that stand out, I'm just going to scroll over. We're going to look at these practice times. Brad Kozlowski, first of all, uh, started 19th, the success he's had here. He's won three of the last six races here, and he was top five in final practice as well as third in 10-lap averages out there as well. So he's got a minus 14 qualifying practice differential. He's number one in the model this week, really stands out. Martin Trex Jr. was on my radar early in the weekend. Um, he did have some trouble there, you know, with handling in final practice, put up a 30th rank in final practice, didn't even run a 10-lap 
um, span while he was out there. He has started in 23rd. He's been awesome here. He's led a ton of laps. So I think now I've, I've switched him over to more of a GPP only play. It's really nice that his price is coming in where it is at DraftKings as the fifth most expensive driver. But just with some of those issues, I think he's, you know, he's probably, he's still got that top five winning upside there, but it's a little bit more risky than a guy like Kozlowski that showed top five speed in final practice. Kyle Busch is going to be up there as well for me. He's got a chance to get out there and dominate laps. As you can see, he's starting third, but looking at Harvick uh, starting first with the troubles he had, I don't think he's going to lead too many laps. I don't think we're going to see a lot of those laps led. Um, and the reason I say that, looking at some of the props from Vegas this weekend for this race, they've got total number of different drivers to lead a lap. Well, it's the over-under is set at 11 and a half. There was nine in Atlanta last weekend, and that was a race where we've seen Kyle Larson lead 142 laps. So I just don't think, um, I think we're going to see more. I, I would actually probably bet the over on that one. I'm thinking somewhere, you know, 12, 13. And then the other prop bet that was out there was total number of lead changes. And the number I'm seeing most consistently is probably around 23 and a half. And the, the record here at Las Vegas is 28, and then we've seen 25, 24 a bunch of times. So they're kind of looking at that as if you're betting the over, you're kind of thinking they're going to get near that, uh, you know, the, the most in history at uh, Las Vegas Motor Speedway. So I'm definitely thinking that we're going to see a lot of lead changes, probably, you know, four or five drivers each leading 20 laps. We could see that. We could even see um, somewhere maybe two or three drivers leading 50 laps, but I don't think we're going to see that 100 laps lead mark from a driver from Dominator. So that little lowers that a little bit and puts that emphasis on the place differential. So getting back into the picks here, a couple other guys that stand out here on the sheet this week, looking especially at that place differential right away is Eric Almirola and Kurt Busch. They're both starting uh, outside the top 20, 25th for Almirola, 28th for Kurt Busch. Um, both were top 10 in final practice. Almirola a little bit quicker. He was inside the top five in 10 lap averages and the one lap average there as well. So they're both going to be in my core this week. And then Eric Jones sandwiched in the middle of those two, I think makes a nice GPP play. He started inside the top 20, showed top 10 speeds in that final practice today. I think he's going to be a little bit lower owned than Kurt Busch and Almirola. And with Kurt Busch, I definitely like doing some team stacking this week. So with Kurt Busch lineups, I'm going to have a lot of Kyle Larson mixed in. Um, he's starting inside the top 10, so could be a little bit lower on, especially with Martin Trex Jr., Brad Keselowski, um, Kyle Busch, all up there taking up some ownership as well, and even some of these guys starting outside below him. But he was top 10 in 10-lap averages in that final practice, so Kyle Larson, Kurt Busch, I definitely like for a stack. Um, for the Joe Gibbs racing side of things, I'd probably, my most comfortable stack with those two would be Kyle Busch and Eric Jones. If you can get Kyle Busch, Martin Truex, and Eric Jones in a line, I've definitely like that. Hamill's kind of the odd man out for me here this week um, at Las Vegas. He doesn't have a strong track record here. He started in second, so he has negative place differential value, and he didn't have top 10 speed in final practice. So he's the odd man out for JGR for me this week. It's probably going to make him a great GPP play because he's going to be very low owned. Um, but I think he would need to lead some laps and finish inside the top three. And if you don't think he's going to do that, he's definitely not going to be the play that you're going to be looking for this week. Going down even farther, looking at some guys, um, we've got Austin Dillon. He ranks very well here, but he qualified four, so that leaves him as a GPP play, but he showed a ton of speed. Like I said, if you want to go GPP heavy, I think Austin Dillon and Hemrick would allow you. You could stack those two with pretty much any other stack out there because Hemrick is really cheap, and then we've got some other values out there as well. Ryan Newman sticks out in the model big time third overall, start in 29th. He's been successful here. He was one of the guys that hated the pack racing qualifying that they had this week. Um, he'd let, rather go back to single car when he won like every pole every single week. That's not going to happen. But him starting 29th, showing top 10 speed with his history here at Las Vegas at 7,200 on DraftKings, 8,400 on FanDuel is an excellent value. And then one guy that I'm looking at, um, I talked about, I'm probably going to be doing in some of my um, stars and scrubs heavy lineups if you want to go cash and you want to get four stars in there uh, five stars even definitely you can go that way is Ross Chastain he's 24th in my model which is pretty good considering that he is only 5500 on DraftKings and almost low 3500 on FanDuel he has finished um, just kind of going and looking at his record here he has had some success here he's starting 38 this week which is dead last 
gives him positive place differential. Um, he can't get negative place differential. All he can do is even if he finishes 38th. So there is, you know, that small risk. But overall, I don't think there is a lot of risk. And he's raced here twice, started 33rd last year in this race, finished 29th, started 34th in the playoff race, and finished 20th. So he only showed 33rd speed in final practice, but if he cracks that top 30, he, you know, he's really crushing value at that price. And, you know, if he even finishes in that 33rd to 35th, he's still giving you those points. Um, and for that price, especially on FanDuel, that's enough if you get this top, you know, if you really nail those top four or five drivers in your lineup um, in, the st in the stars section here. So that's definitely the way I'm looking. So overall, I'm looking at place differential a little bit more here. Really don't know what to expect. So what I will do is I will build probably about 60 to 70% of my lineups based around that place differential strategy. And then probably um, the rest, I'm going to get some dominators in there and play some, you know, some G contrarian GPP lineups. Um, as well. So I think I'm going to run both strategies, but like I said, I'm going to be a little bit more heavy on the place differential side of things. Thanks for checking out the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. A lot more videos coming out. Um, you know, PGA, NHL, NASCAR, and like I said, baseball season's right around the corner. Good luck this week, everyone.